Hi, my name is Stephanie. I'm a software developer based in Baltimore, and today we're going to go over sprints. Simply put, a sprint is a period of time that a team has to complete a set amount of work. In the case here, the development cycle is two weeks. Generally, that amount of time can vary from team to team, and it could be as long as a month or as short as a week. You can think of development sprints like a running sprint. They're both completed in a short amount of time, and you have definitive end goals you're trying to achieve at the end. For a running sprint, your goal is to cover the distance you've committed to running in a set amount of time, and for a development sprint, your goal is to push out code you're committed to writing in a set amount of time. Now that we've defined what a sprint is, these are some key takeaways that make sprints unique to other software development cycles and how sprints can accelerate the development process. Sprint planning happens at the beginning of the sprint. In this meeting, the team outlines the goals that will be completed by the end of the sprint. The product owner, who is responsible for the product's growth, will work with the developers to outline a list of goals to be completed. The product owner determines the priority of the business needs and maintains this product backlog, which contains all the requests that aim to deliver value to clients. And so the product owner will move tasks from the product backlog into the sprint backlog, which is a list of tasks that the team is committed to completing in the duration of the sprint. Meanwhile, the developers will bring the technical perspective and make sure that the sprint goals can be completed. Sprints can last anywhere between a week to a month. I've typically seen them occur within two weeks. By limiting the time frame, it forces the planners to stick to small iterative changes, so that you don't have a lot of massive features or too many changes going out at once. Plus, this allows clients to get a more seamless experience as they're transitioning to newer versions of the product. It also helps expedite releases. On the right, you can see that when you push out really large features in one go, there's a lot of time being spent with little progress being made. This is because you spend more time going through more code to debug and test than if you were to make smaller changes. So when you limit the size and quantity of the features going out, like in the graph on the left, bugs are a lot easier to catch. You can isolate the issue more easily when there's less code to go through. It's like when you're playing Where's Waldo, with Waldo being your bug and the rest of the picture being your code. It's a lot easier to play when the picture is smaller, isn't it? There may also be times when your business needs change in the middle of your sprint and make your sprint goals obsolete. It might throw off the time estimates for the rest of the sprint, but that's okay. Sprints are just a way to shape and organize development work. Depending on how the new business needs change the goals of the sprint, the product owner can meet with the developers to create new tasks to complete, or developers can pull tasks from their own backlog and work on reducing technical debt. But at the end of the day, your product's needs should drive development. For example, say you opened up a lemonade stand, and your sprint goal is to make lemonade. Now, you're in the middle of your sprint making the lemonade, but because you live on the East Coast, the weather forecast says that the weather is going to go from a heat wave to snow by the end of your sprint. Surely your clients aren't going to want lemonade anymore, so you change your sprint goal to make hot chocolate. And now, when the sprint is complete, you made it! You have a new and functional iteration of your lemonade stand. All the features that you've worked on are completely functional and fully tested, and you're ready for the whole cycle to start over again. So remember, a sprint is a development cycle where your team will be completing a list of goals during that time frame. It may be useful to organize your team in a particular way, but at the end of the day, you're trying to deliver value to your clients. And so your business needs will always be driving your development goals. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please join the conversation by dropping a comment below and subscribing to this channel. And if you're ready to take your skills to the next level, you can start learning on Codecademy today.